Welcome to this edition of Inspire Teach Excel. I'm Emily Jubitoni, the director of the skit at Bishop Chaloner Training School Alliance. And today's session, we're going to be having a quick look at behavior for learning and some tips and strategies from current research literature. Um, one of the things that we talk to trainees about is the way that you kind of visualize the strategies of behavior management. And I find it really helpful to think of them if uh, from a funnel perspective, where you know, at the kind of top of your funnel, the biggest area, you've got the strategies which you are using with your whole class. And these are the really non-intrusive things that you are routinely doing, non-verbal strategies. So things like um, making sure that you're visibly positioned at the front of the classroom so that the students can always see you and they feel like, you know, there's always that teacher presence there. Things like just making eye contact with the students. Things like just uh, tapping your hand on the desk or putting your hand in the air just so that students know that you are asking for quiet or asking them for to look a certain way. Um, some of these might be about engaging with individual students. That might be just walking over to an individual student as standing in close proximity to them uh, to support them in that way. Might be just your tone of voice, varying your tone of voice um, so that without actually saying anything which is about behaviour, students can tell that you are either needing them to be quiet or that you are being a bit interrogatory about what they are doing, you know, that kind of like, and now we're ready to move on. Brilliant, glad to hear it. Just kind of using your tone of voice in that way. Least intrusive behaviour strategies that are working with the whole class all the time. One of those is about thinking about how positive you are in your classroom environment. One of the research studies that the EEF really kind of publicise in their behaviour management um, kind of guidance report is the five to one rule, which says that for every one comment that you want to make in the classroom that might be seen as a negative behaviour comment, you want to try and balance that with five positive comments. Now that can seem a little bit overwhelming. If I need to tell five students to stop talking, I've got to make 25 positive comments in the lesson. And really the only way that you can think about doing that is to really front load that positive. You can't be spending the first five minutes of your lesson making loads and loads of negative behavior comments and then trying to win that back later with positivity. What you're trying to do is bank as much positivity as possible as students as they come into the room, as you're establishing that relationship, really building up a kind of um, bank of positivity that you can then withdraw from in your five to one ratio uh, when you need to challenge behavior verbally. One way to do that is the strategy narrate the positive. And the strategy there is literally just to describe positive things you can see constantly. Saying things to students like, I can see 90% of the students in this room are all working, that's great to see. I am so pleased to see how neat your book is looking right now. I can see at the moment, everybody on this row is quiet and facing forwards exactly like I've asked. I can see and just really narrating every good thing that you can say out loud to the class in that ratio of five to one. And what that does is buy you that goodwill and that relationship that's positive so that as you're moving down your funnel from your least intrusive to actually needing to engage with one-to-one -one students and verbally challenge behavior, you've got that kind of um, banked goodwill. You are not going to be engaging with every student to challenge behavior. So you're moving further down your funnel now um, and a smaller number of students, you will need to say to them verbal things out loud about managing behavior. And again, you're trying to think about consistency there. So when you are talking to students, you constantly want to be coming back to the rules. This is not about picking on students. This is about saying, we are following whole school rules here. Um, student, let's just remind ourselves, you need to be doing this. And that consistency is key because then you're really getting the students to be thinking, this is just about fairness. Everybody's doing the same thing and I should be involved with that. You really want with those individual students to be giving them the respect that maybe it feels like they're not showing you by talking in this moment or by doing something disrespectful, but you always want to be in the position of saying, I am being respectful here. So that might be challenging them nicely in a lesson, politely, respectfully in a lesson. It might be having a conversation outside. And you can see here that the funnel is getting smaller and smaller, a smaller and smaller number of group of students all the time. In a lesson, if you need to speak to a student outside, only a few students are ever gonna be getting to that point where actually challenging them in the lesson 
has not got the job done. So you're thinking about this, most of the students are being engaged by that positivity and that clarity and the, maybe the routines you've got. A few students you are then engaging with by consistently using the school rules when you're talking to them. A smaller group of students, you might want to have that conversation outside. And when you have that conversation outside, you're trying to make it so that you are really demonstrating to that student that this is about trying to help them. So when you're having the conversation, you're thinking of what, how can you phrase that? It's about the consistency, but it's also about saying to the student, I'm having this conversation outside out of care and respect for your learning and what I need you to be doing in the classroom. I'm really building that trust by articulating to the student. I've not brought you out here because I got into it. I want to shout at you. I've brought you out here because this is a strategy to help you get back on, tra on track with your learning. You're always thinking long term. Yes, the shouting in the moment might have the effect of making that student feel like they've done something bad. Is it going to help build a positive relationship long term? Probably not. So having that conversation angled towards how can we get you to cool off? How can we get you to reset? And I think that word reset is really powerful to be thinking the conversation outside is about re restoring and resetting their learning behaviours before they come back in. Finally, as you keep going down that funnel, maybe even that strategy hasn't worked, you might have the odd student where you're still engaging with them. And again, you funneled this down more and more. And now we're talking about following up. And when you think about your workload as a teacher and you've got to think about outside the lesson, you know, you're going to have to follow things up. If you're setting sanctions that are detentions, that is going to be some time that you're going to have to kind of uh, communicate and put into place. Think about the fact that you are narrowing that so that's only a small group of pupils. And what you want is your time outside the classroom to have a positive long-term impact. So be thinking about when you make a phone call home or when you have a student come back in detention, it's only a few students, but you want it to be impactful. It's not just about this is a punishment. It's about resetting the relationship, resetting their commitment, resetting their motivation, looking for opportunities to reset their attitude to what happens in your lesson. And you really want to be focusing on that in that conversation with them and with their parents. Um, so that's just a, a couple of different ways that we might think about managing behaviour for your whole group uh, and as you're kind of uh, supporting the students through their learning. Um, thank you very much for listening and uh, love to have you back for future episodes of Inspire Teach Excel.